Sunshine Coast Foil Festival for 2022. It's the inaugural festival. I'm Mike Walker. We're here with Liam Tarr and we're on Malulabar Beach, ready to get some action underway soon. We've got about half an hour before the first start and the competitors are going out now. There's a uh, first foiler is testing the wind and the water for us out there and we've got first possible start in about half an hour so it should be a great day we're going to start out with some wing foil racing then move to some wing foil expression sessions and unfortunately today because of the weather and the swell and the conditions we've put the kite foil racing on hold so I'd like to introduce you to wel to welcome Liam Tarr. Yeah it's, uh, it's a bit unfortunate about the uh, kite racing today but uh, hopefully we get some good wing racing in so that's going to be the main thing. The, uh, the swell is pretty awesome out there today. At the very least for the expression sessions, it should be awesome. They are, hopefully, the wind's starting to come in now, so we're going to have some good wind for that, uh, the wing racing as well. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's, um, uh, we've had a bit of a bad run for the first day, but uh, hopefully the second day is going to make up for it, and the third day as well. Absolutely. So let's have a look at the uh, competitor list. The... Um Hmm. A little technical issue there. <laughs> Wouldn't be a live stream if there wasn't a little technical issue somewhere. Ah, oh, there we go. But um, this is the starting list, the competitors. We've got um, quite a few here, as you can see. These are all for the Wing 4 racing. Some good pedigree of competitors there. It should be really good fun out there. We've got 22 competitors. And um, good luck to all of you. There's their bib numbers, and we'll have a really good time out there today. A few of them got out yesterday in the expression session. We also ran the uh, we ran a little uh, trial session and practice session in the uh, river, and uh, some of them did really well. Uh, people to watch out for: are, uh, Lachlan. That's down the bottom there. Mike. Down. Uh, yeah, Lachlan's at yeah. the bottom here. Yeah. Lachlan White, he yeah. did really well, didn't no, he? 22. Yeah, he uh, he won the race or one of the practice races. And uh, we also have uh, Tyson as well as quite someone to watch as well, number nine. Tyson. Yeah. Yeah. Tyson Forrest, he did really well. Yeah, he was just also did awesome in the expression session. He was uh, definitely the smallest person out there. He was doing some pretty big jumps as well. He was. <laughs> so yeah, yesterday's expression session, we've got a highlights reel for you actually. Let's, um, let's go straight to that now. Um, I'll bring this up, hang on a second. Day one highlights. Bringing it in. Ready to play. Super excited to finally get this event here. Have the council on board. Sunshine Coast Council has been amazing to help us set this up. Unfortunately, uh, cyclonic conditions uh, prevailed on the coast, sending the swell you can see behind me up the coast, which makes kite foil racing really difficult. We're still hoping to get um, some wing foil expression session in the bay and maybe some racing in the river later. But yes, uh, competitors are here. We've got 50 signed up, which is a great result for a sport like this. We're very excited to finally have something on the coast. Early start, we had the race committee finding the cyclone swell off New Caledonia, forcing the boats to stay in the harbour. And we had to postpone the kite racing and the wing four racing. And we went out onto the water with the expression session. There was lots of waves coming through, big swell, easy for the riders. We've got the, the results for you now. In third place, We've got Tyson Forrest getting some great waves. Second place, local boy Matt Hadland. And first place on day one, Hugh and Linfield. After the expression session, we moved to the river here, Malula River in front of the wharf. We had three races happening here. Fantastic conditions, challenging conditions for the riders. Lots of gusts, lots of holes, shifting winds. Difficult challenge. The race, first race was a bit long, brought it in on the second race and we'll bring you the results tomorrow. Fantastic stuff. That was the highlights from yesterday, day one at the Sunny Coast Foil Festival. And um, yeah, as you can see, there was some pretty nice swell. I'd like to show you what we can see out there now on the drone. Um, and it's again, similar conditions. We've got quite a swell going on. This is 
That's Tyson. Tyson, is it? Yeah, so Tyson's doing great out there. He's playing with some waves. And um, obviously this cyclone swell has not abated from yesterday. It's only gotten bigger. And, um, yeah, it's looking pretty exciting out there. The course is going to get set fairly soon. And when it does, we'll get some wing fall reaching underway. So reaching is going across the wind, not upwind so much or downwind. It's fairly perpendicular to the wind flow and that's a fairly fast point of sale it's fairly easy for the competitors it'll be a start figure eight course and then back to a finish so uh should be should be good viewing we've uh we've got lots of competitors some really good talent here and a bit of swell to throw a little uh challenge in the mix and i'm really looking forward to it yeah i want to see someone do a jump in the race that's <laughs> gonna be the best part yeah, <laughs> yeah very good so I'd like to um, bring you a message from our sponsors um, and our primary sponsor is Sunshine Coast, visit Sunshine Coast, the council here, they've been really supportive and um, really enjoyed working with those guys on this event. Thank you very much Sunshine Coast Council, here's a little message from them. Yes, thanks to the Sunshine Coast Council. If you're visiting the Sunshine Coast, there are so many good food and beverage places to go here. There's such a good lifestyle, warm weather, clean waters, clean forests. We've got the hinterland with the views of the Glasshouse Mountains and the rainforests. Fantastic stuff out there. And then also the beach as well. We've got some beautiful selection of beaches here. So come to the Sunshine Coast, visit family and friends, or just come for a holiday, check it out. There's so many tourism activities to do. And um, yeah, some especially the beaches. I'm I'm a beach boy, so can't go past it. Clean sand, clean water, and nice waves. Swell, yeah. 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 Look at that today. That's awesome. Swells on today. Let's uh, let's take a bit of a look at the drone, and we'll um, yeah we'll be able to see those guys have got a fair bit of wind out there today. Today it's, uh, it looks a little bit better than in previous days, and the uh, the race committee boats out as well. He's laying the course in what can only be described as challenging conditions. We're, we've got a, a modified racing setup today. The course is going to be set with uh, two boys for the start. Normally in racing, the race committee boat is the starboard end of the start line. And then there's a pin at the, at the port end. But because of the swell so close to the, the start, the, uh, we don't want to have the race committee boat on anchor in case a rogue wave or a wide set comes. There's the boat there. You can see how close they are to the swell and how in amongst the action they are. So they don't want to be anchored with this sort of conditions. Sorry, that's a jet ski actually. The, the race committee's out there too. But um, yeah, we're gonna set two boys for the start line and give that race committee boat a little bit of flexibility to jump out of the way if a big set comes. We got to say a big thanks to all the jet skis and volunteers and all the race committee as well. They're just getting out there in the boats, getting out there in these conditions. It's a bit of a risk, of course, but uh, they're uh, still out there having a good race for all, helping to run a good race for everyone. Yeah. yeah, and we've got competitors steadily leaving the beach now, getting out through the shore break, which is significant in these conditions. Normally the, um, the bay here looks really quite calm on the shore, maybe a little waist high wave if there's a bit of swell on but today with this cyclone swell it's um yeah it's a different story we've got we've got action so let's take a look in a minute at the forecast um and yeah we'll show you why we've got a big swell today i'll um we'll pull up that forecast now and this is this is our forecasting center i'm going to bring it wide and um you can see that swell over near New Caledonia. Up on this, this area here, there's New Cal. This is that 
not quite a cyclone, but it's a pretty significant system slowly moving south and sending the swell right across here through the through the ocean and hitting us over here at Malulaba. Forecast, it has decreased a little bit for wind, um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Sometimes in wind sports you associate them with strong winds, but we don't always need strong winds when we're foiling. Foiling has got such little resistance and drag force on the, on the water that um, we can get our apparent wind speeds up quite easily and we don't really need a lot of, a lot of wind. For example, windsurfing, you know, you wouldn't really bother unless it was at least 15 knots, about, let's say, 30 k's an hour, a bit less. Um, whereas kite foiling, racing, they go out in six knots. Wing foil racing, probably more like eight or 10. So that's essentially half the speed. And um, yeah, we, we can get going and have a lot of fun. So strong winds aren't necessary. I, um, Looking forward to tomorrow. Lighter winds again, southwest in the morning, and then going southeast, which is essentially what we've got now. These wind conditions are pretty nice. Uh, let's take a quick look at the radar. We might need to just refresh this for the latest. And we'll zoom in. Yeah, uh, we're just here right near Mar Maruchidor. This is Brisbane here, Brisbane Airport. Essentially, uh, the Gold Coast here and the New South Wales borders here. So we're on the east coast of Australia, about halfway up, and we've got scattered showers, and it looks like that's gonna probably carry on for the best part of the day. And um, yeah, having a good time here. Hopefully those showers give us a little boost in the wind. That's what we're hoping for. I'm going to cut yeah. back to the, the drone now. Sorry, we're going to cut back to the, the zoom lens on the Canon. And have a look at what's going on. There's a few boats going out there. Committee boat, jet skis, safety support. That's good stuff. Right now, most of the wingers are just having a bit of fun on the swell or they're waiting at the start line, one or the other. So they are having a bit of a play around while they got, oh, what is it? Time is 11.45, so starting at 12 o'clock, the racing will be. So right now, everyone's just having a little bit of a play around and getting ready, as you can see out there. And it's pretty fun swell conditions to have a little play around in. Those nice rolling swells, you can't really catch on anything else other than a foil. So going out there on a wing and just getting those rolling swells, super easy, super nice. Really. Hey guys, we're here with Jean and Oscar, just in the lead up to the uh, Queensland uh, kite foiling and wing foiling states. It's only a few days away and I thought I'd introduce uh, a couple of the riders to you. Uh, we start with you, Jean. Just give us a quick summary of where you're at, how old you are, where you're from, and what your kiting experience is. What's up, guys? I'm Jean de Falbert from Mauritius, 24, currently kite surfing full time now, um, African champion, and I'm really keen to take part to this event and hope we'll have a great time on the water. Oscar Tim, kiteboarding part time, is still in school, um, current junior national champion for Australia. Um, yeah, it's going to be a sick event. So I just landed here last night, super happy to be here. Um, conditions look amazing and I'm quite keen to get on the ocean and hopefully get a good sea breeze. Okay. So forecast is looking promising, some strong wind coming and yeah, keen to go fast around the course. Mm. So since the discipline has been officially Olympic, announced Olympic, the level has raised quite a lot. And um, yeah, for me, my plan is to qualify to the next games. It's a lot of work, a lot of work, a lot of training. And for us, it's great to come and do these events for training. Um, the guys here don't know it, but they are really fast and it's good training for us. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it is a small group of people traveling around the world. We see the same faces at most of the events. Um, it depends how you take it and uh, who you hang around, but we try and keep a cool vibe on the beach yep. and stay serious at the water. It's hard to compete against your best mates. Mm. Um, there's things that happen on the water wish that you wish didn't happen mm. but you just try and keep that on the water and not bring it on the beach and 
try and just stay friendly and keep the good vibes flowing all the time. Good. Some manage to do it, some don't, but that's how it is, and you just try your best. So now, uh, just quickly give us an overview of the format there, John. How, how does it work? Like, it used to be there used to be a, a room around that it was a girl-boy team event. The Olympic is now an individual sport. How does it work? So yeah, at first it was confirmed as a relay. So it will be a lap of either a girl or a boy. Then a relay to the other partner that will do a lap. And once both have completed the course, then you want to have your rank. Um, the Olympic Committee decided to give two medals a few months later. So now it's an individual discipline, boys and girls separated, two medals, um, which some think it's good, it depends for who, but mm. I think it's a good idea to give the girls a shot and they can compare themselves, same for the boys. Yep. It's an upwind and downwind course uh, based on a, a few laps we have to do depending on what the race committee decides and the target time they want. So basically you ride as fast upwind as you can, round the mark, go back as fast downwind as you can, two or three laps and you have a finish line. Okay. So it's a quite tactical, strategic um, course. It's not all about as fast as you can go. You also have to be really clever on the course and take right decisions, which is a big part of the game. Okay, Oscar, you tell me, um, there, there's a lot of hype around the uh, kite falling now being an Olympic sport, etc., etc. So somebody of your age and your ability, where, where do you think the sport is going, particularly, you know, sitting next to a world-class, more mature kiter, kiter like Jean? So what, what do you think? Where, where is this going? Oh, well, I think it's super exciting. Yeah, of course, coming at coming Olympic is awesome. This sport is growing super fast now, especially on the East Coast and West Coast of Australia. Mm. Don't have much experience overseas, but it looks like it's growing super fast over there, mm. which is awesome. What's your schedule look like these days and what are the responsibilities an athlete like you has to carry for Australia? Um, at the moment, it's focusing on school a little bit more as I'm going into grade 12, but I'm trying to get out about three to four times a week um, on water and then gym on top of that, um, cardio as well, and then just keeping on top of my diet things like that, trying to increase my weight, okay. get better at the sport. Okay. For anyone to watch this, now we have, uh, this event will take place at the Olympic venue for 2032, um, just off the coast of Alexandra Headlands, there will be a big vantage point there. Oscar, uh, looking at the weather forecast, which I know you guys do every two minutes in the lead up to an event like this, uh, what sort of speeds do you, do you anticipate hitting around the course and uh, you know, how exciting will it be for people to watch this kind of thing? Or I think going downwind, which is our fastest point, we're probably hitting 30, 35 plus knots, which is maxing out pretty much, or for me at least, yeah. maxing out yeah. um, top end, which gets pretty scary, but yeah, it's good to watch okay. when you're going that fast. Well, thank you guys. It was awesome, John. Thank you. We'll see you on the race course. Thanks for making the trip out to Australia to, you know, bring our event up to world standard. And Oscar, of course, lead up to... Um, to the Youth World Championships in the Netherlands. And uh, Jean, thanks very much for making the trip around the world to participate in this. Very happy to have you here. Um, we'll have an interview with Hector, probably your main competitor for this event. You two will battle it out um, in the next couple of days. Oscar, big event for you in the lead up to the Youth Worlds in the Netherlands. Good luck, guys. Thank you. What a great interview. Thanks, Kai. Kai's our um, event coordinator, our event organizer for the SKR Sunny Coast Foil Festival. Uh, and thank you very much to Kai, his wife Gabby, and uh, a massive team of volunteers from Malula Bay Yacht Club and in the kiting and wing foiling scene in general. So thanks, huge thanks to the volunteers who have really made this event run smooth. Also, um, like to put a mention in there for some of our smaller sponsors. We've got um, Waydo Electric Foils from Noosa. They, We've got a great product there, um, easy way to learn foiling. If you want to learn to, to foil, there's a, there's a few ways. You need some, some forward movement. You can get that from the wind, you can get it from a boat being towed on a rope, or you can get it from an electric foil, or of course from a kite. So obviously the wing and the, the kite require some additional skills. A boat requires another person and that infrastructure, but an electric foil is something you can do independently so we do have got a really good product for learning to foil and also just having having fun hooning around the canals and on the ocean catching waves so definitely give that a bit of bit of thought if you're looking for a new toy and something to learn foiling with we've got forward whip fantastic accessories for sailing f1 wonderful international brand making anything you need for for water sports 
We've got Kite Thrills who are on the southern end of the Sunshine Coast teaching and supplying equipment to the masses. And um, yeah, I think we've got a really good setup here. Quite a big shore break coming into Mooloolaba Bay and the wing foils are getting ready to go now. So that's hey, good vision. You can see a few of them out there now racing around the course, just having a few practice runs, you know, getting ready to go. Yeah, yeah, it looks good. There's obviously some fairly sizable swells coming through and the fleet is making their way out through the the breaking waves out to the calmer waters out behind. It looks like the course is nearly set. And um, yeah, I think we'll be making a start in about probably half an hour or, or a bit less. The first warning signal is scheduled for 12 o'clock, which is pretty soon, five, 10 minutes. And, um, and from that warning signal, racers will be getting ready for a start. Yeah, and the uh, location here has actually been well. We haven't, well, we haven't had the best conditions. It's uh, you can tell it has a lot of potential for the uh, future Olympic Games and stuff like that already. You can see around the uh, the wing foilers out there going around their courses and stuff. They, uh, and it's uh, you can tell like out there in the water. Once they're actually out there in the water, it's uh, it's fine. We just have a few uh, a few techniques we need to work around to get uh, get into some more of the uh, the into the water part. Let's show you the um, the location just to give you all the give you a bit of a sense of where we're at on the world. Um, here's our little scene of the site. Obviously, we're in Australia, east coast, and this is the Sunshine Coast, Malulaba, the jewel in the crown. That river there, the, the fisheries the restaurants, the bars, the little bar yacht club and the wharf complex. Fantastic west facing views, sunsets over the water. Really good, good place to come and visit. So, um, come down here, visit the Sunshine Coast and enjoy your holidays.